modern than I eat. Oh boy. Okay. Awesome. So the website is modern than I eat. Yes, Microsoft is paying Ireland for domains, but at the same time, it works for both parties. Ireland gets money, and Microsoft gets their .ie. Um, on the website, it's got this browser stack testing trial. We'll take a look at browser stack. It's got this article, Code with Standards. And we'll scan a website. So rather than going through my canned slides in case you didn't have access, let's just go straight to the site. The modern IE, <coughs> notice here, it says testing just got a little bit easier. We can scan the web page. And there's also about three months of browser stack testing free. Browser stack, what it allows to do is test across multiple, uh, multiple browsers to see how sites uh, work. It's all in a virtual uh, machine. It's pretty neat to see. So first, let's scan a web page. And I don't like throwing people under the bus, so I'm going to throw myself under the bus. Let's look at Cleveland.com. Have you guys heard about this site? Okay, I'm saying that. If you haven't heard about it, I keep track of over 60 different technical user groups in the Cleveland area. Um, so Cleveland's a very busy place in terms of tech. So notice I just told it to scan. It's thinking and thinking. So I have no compatibility issues for old versions of IE, but there's some frameworks and libraries things that there's a concern with. So let's take a look and see what's going on. Uh, so jQuery, nearest compatible updates, 164.190. Oh, I probably have an old version is what it's telling me. So what do I want to do? How to fix it? Do I want to use Compat Inspector? Or do I want to update jQuery? Um, we can update jQuery, and I know how to do that, but let's go there and have to see, see what it does. It just takes me to jQuery to say, hey, this is where you get your jQuery. Okay, thanks, guys. Um, Compat Inspector will just take us to the user guide, which is not going to help us at this point. But at least it tells us what's wrong and what we could do to fix it. Notice there's also some suggested enhancements. So it's not necessarily something is wrong and killing it. It's just something could make it better to use. And you'll see that the layout that I set for my website on Saturday. So I presented about Cleveland Tech events and we changed it. <coughs> it's not a responsive theme. Um, responsive web design, you've got your big screen and it scales down nicely. Yeah, that new format, not so much. But notice here on the right hand side, it also gives me suggestions on how I can improve my site. So I could learn about responsive web design. Let's say I don't know what it is, it'll tell me more. Notice when I hover over it, it tells me exactly where it's going to take me. So we're going over to a list apart, which if you haven't heard about that site, you really should. It's been around for a long time. It's a great web resource. Um, using uh, responsive web design for multiple screens. So there's, you have to face it, today it's not just about the desktops and the laptop. You got tablets, you got phones, people are browsing. And then you also need to learn about targeting large screens like iPods. Otherwise it's going to take you straight to design adaptive websites. The modern IDE is nice in that it'll give you suggestions on where you can improve your site where you can correct <coughs> um, and even how you can benefit for, make it so it's more beneficial for Windows 8 and the user experience there. Because Microsoft is expecting Windows 8 to take off a little bit more, especially now that there's more tablets entering the market, which we'll see. Um, speaking of, on April 13th, Cleveland's Microsoft Store is opening, so if you want to see some of these Windows 8 tablets, uh, you'll want to check out the store. It's going to be at Beachwood Mall. Um, across from the Lego store in the lower level. So, if you have haven't one, seen... Do they have one with 8 gig of RAM yet? What's that? Do they have one with 8 gig of RAM yet? I don't know what they have. <laughs> I think they all have 4. I saw I somebody say. complaining about it. Yeah, I, I don't know what the store will have to show. Um, that was April 15th? April 13th. 13th. Yeah, it's a Saturday. So 
that's the skinniest like art. Another thing that they have, I'm going to look at virtual tools. It, they actually have some virtual machines for us to download. <coughs> I'm going to do some testing with that. Notice they also talk about OS X and Linux users. So Microsoft is smart enough to acknowledge that it's not a mi just a Microsoft world. There are other people who are playing in this arena. And we want to play nicely with everybody. We want to be nice. <coughs> Excuse me. So there are various tools we can get. So let's say I wanted to test on Mac. And it gives me options for VMware, VirtualBox. So they're aware of the various virtualization tools that are out there. So you can download VMs for testing. Um, there's also this website called Browser Stack. Um, the uh, Modern IE, you have a special three months for testing. <coughs> And they also have Chrome and Firefox add-ins. So let's take a look at Browser Stack. And I do have an account because I created it when I saw it. So what it's doing is checking the cloud, <coughs> spinning up a VM for me. And it'll start the browser. And it'll connect me to my server. And you'll get to see the various things I get to test with. so far? Okay. <coughs> well, I want to take a look. Show me. And you'll notice that the Mac OS's are available, and iOS, and Android, and Opera, so other emulators besides Microsoft ones. Um, but there, you have to operate through it. For demo purposes, I'm just going to bring it down to Windows 7. And right now, they don't have IE10 on the Windows 7 VMs. But however, it is available now for you to test on your own local machine. So I can say, I'm going to test for IE9. And who does 1024 by 768? Let's shoot it up a little bit more to 1280 by 1024. So now you'll see that it updated my VM to test with. I'm working on the i9 and it's loading my site. So now I can see how this is going to work in the other browsers. You can see, oh, it's a pretty looking site. And if I come up here for tooltips, there are various different tools. You notice they included Firebug, so there is something that I included. <coughs> you can also test your local <coughs> server. Um, some other resources that they include is automated testing, local testing, developer tools, integration security. So this is a complete list of the various tools that you have um, based on which virtual machine you spin up. So Browser Stack offers all sorts of tools. Um, it's great if you really need to test across multiple platforms and don't want to spin up the virtual machines yourself. Somebody else is already doing the work for you. Write them a check and eventually once your trial expires. Or just use it for the trial period and decide whether it's something that's going to be good for you. What's the, what's the cost on it? That part I haven't looked into just yet. We are playing with it for trial mode. <coughs> is it the studio as well or something else? What's that? Isn't it a big individual studio as well? Something along those lines, I thought. There was something in Expression Web, wasn't there? Uh, oh, the oh are you thinking, um, super, I know. Super, something? super Preview. Super Preview. Yeah, Super Preview. Um, super Preview only supported so many browsers and so many versions. This goes a little bit further than that. Um, and then there's also Spoon.net, if you haven't heard of that. That also allows you to test with various browsers, too. <coughs> Um, another thing that Modern IE has is an article about cross-browser best practices. And I figured in case I didn't have an internet connection, I would include some of the key tips that I saw them like screaming at people all the time to do. Um, this is an article that was written by the president of the jQuery Foundation and uh, one of the evangelists at Microsoft, Ray Vango. So 20 tips for building modern sites. Sites don't have to render the same across all browsers. I don't 
understand why so many people are like, oh, if I run this site here on this IE6 machine, it has to do the same thing as IE10. If you think about it, the technology back when IE6 was popular, is nowhere near where it is today. You can't expect an old machine to necessarily do the same things that the new machines are doing because back then the technology just wasn't there. So really don't try to do the same thing across, try to target your environment. Test in multiple browsers. Again, they say a tool such as Browser Stack. Microsoft's going to push Browser Stack because they have a partnership. I'm going to tell you there's Browser Stack, there's Spoon.net. Um, super preview if you're doing the expression stuff, but we know that expression is a lot. Yeah. Understand the backward <laughs> compatibility limits of HTML5 tags um, because they are handled differently in the older versions of IE. There are tools out there that will help with that. But at the same time, if you don't understand it, then you probably shouldn't be using the tools. Fully prefix vendor specific CSS properties to future proof them. Because going forward, you never know if a browser is going to change something and you're going to find something missing. This one. Every time I see this, I scream. Solve compatibility problems with valid CSS rules, not CSS partners or hacks. Don't be using the asterisk or the underscore, learn the right way to do it. And this article will actually explain the right way to do it. Um, Modern IE, if it picks it up, it will tell you that you should be doing it a different way as well. And delay load non-essential JavaScript scripts. So don't load every single JavaScript file you have known to man in your right at the beginning. That's ridiculous. Um, if you're not familiar with delay loading, this article explains how to do that as well. Because I noticed, I was talking with a, one of my other developer friends, and he was just like, hey, like, Sarah, do you know a way of how to delay this stuff? And I'm like, yes, yes, I do, actually. Here you go. And he's like, how did you know that? I'm like, I played with JavaScript with it. I'm like, but it's not always used because people don't understand it. All right, so that's all I've got on modern IE. Let's look at Compat Inspector. I just had a, a slide on this. Um, so what it does is it'll you'll add a little script, be it to, or a little like a JavaScript uh, HTML thing to the top of your page, or you if you've got Fiddler, you can also add it to Fiddler scripts. This site will explain how to do it in a way. But it's a JavaScript-based testing tool that will analyze the website, it will identify the problems and make suggestions. So think of, instead of doing the scan of site of, on modern IE, you're doing this locally on your machine. And the output that it returns is just like the suggestions you're seeing on modern IE. This is just your local way of working with it. Uh, again, it looks similar. And there's a user guide too. Um, it's very neat to see because it's got a bunch of colors. That will tell you if something is an error and if something is a warning. You can see the user guide. These are pretty colors. And notice it will tell you if this is the kind of output. You can actually verify things. You can debug if something doesn't look right. It'll tell you how to debug them. <coughs> notice in here with the resolution. If you're using a certain uh, version of Great to the Latest, Otherwise, see this article. So the suggestions that they have are actually very detailed and very thought out. It's not a simple, you just have a problem and we're not going to tell you how to fix it. you got to figure it out yourself. No, they actually make suggestions on how you can fix it. So it's a very helpful tool. And honestly, some of these suggestions that they make aren't necessarily just IE specific. They're across <coughs> other browsers as well. So Compat Inspector is a nice tool to have. And you'll notice it's available on the IE test drive, which we'll look at <coughs> as well. And again, the links are included in this presentation, so feel free to download it. Uh, screenshots from browser stack. It uh, supports multiple browsers. The Internet Explorer 10 Guide for Developers, or the, just the IE 10 Developer Guide. Another helpful resource when you're developing for IE10. It covers all sorts of different topics. As you can 
see compatibility, CSS, DOM, um, FTL developer tools. How many people have not heard of the FTL developer tools? Okay, so I'm not going to get into those too much other than you press F12, they can love them pretty cool. Um, HTML5 support for Internet Explorer 10, IndexedDB, so a lot of the newer stuff. Windows 8 integration, I always have to point this one out. Um, with Internet Explorer 10, if you design your site a certain way, the Windows 8 integration is really cool. Um, we can do things from doing what they call link previews to making your sites pinnable and having custom tiles for that. Um, there are all sorts of nifty things there. Again, their topics include things such as the compatibility modes in IE. As more, more versions of IE are released, more compatibility modes appear. So this will cover what the different compatibility modes are and what to test under. Uh, quirks mode and how you deal with that. Uh, CSS3 exclusion. It covers how to work around that. Uh, working with web workers. If you're dealing with web workers, F12 developer tools will help you out. Read this guy, really. Uh, app cache support, web workers in general, index DB, filter effects for SVGs, Windows 8 integration. So, the one thing I like to show is the link preview example. <coughs> what this does is it extends the Windows 8 share experience. <coughs> Um, the things that a link preview would need, you need the title for the web page, no longer than 160 characters. So everything knows is let's keep it brief, keep it short and to the point. Description, no longer than 160 characters. A thumbnail, a URL, no longer than 2048 characters. And this is what the sample code looks like. So ignore the smart quotes. Thank you, PowerPoint, for putting that um, But if you notice, with the title for the web page, you can use the good old title tag that we have in simple HTML, or there's a meta tag for that. Um, in terms of description, it's a meta tag. And then in terms of thumbnails, there are one, two, three, four different ways you can address that uh, through the link tag or through three different meta tags. So once you have all those in place, then you can get a link preview for your site, which appears nicely. Uh, webplatform.org. Has anybody heard of this? Okay, so what this is, the W3C is creating this community-driven site. Um, basically, what they want is the authoritative site for web development in general. It's not necessarily going to be web development for a particular brand. <coughs> it's just the overall concept of web development. Um, the, the people who are behind it, besides W3C, it's great to see familiar names. So we've got Adobe, Facebook, Google, HP, and now Microsoft, Nokia, Mozilla, and Opera Software. Notice Apple's not on there. I'm not sure why. I don't know if they're pursuing it. It would be nice to have at least another uh, platform represented. It's, yeah, it, it's great to have that. They also have a lot of tutorials on their site for web. Um, from Essentials testing, yes, there is testing on, on the web. Um, and it gets into specific topics. I like to show that there are a variety of things covered. So anything you're feeling in terms of web development, there's probably a tutorial on webplatform.org that will help you in understanding the concepts. The tutorial is not there, it is a work in progress. Well, if we take a look at the website. It's still, uh, you can contribute. And if we look under docs, the bats and alpha and tutorials are also work of process. Um, so documents, these are things that will give you more into the various concepts from, let's just say you're starting out, there's a beginner's guide. Um, and just in case you're <coughs> curious as to what some of these things are and what it looks like, they click, gives you a summary, gives you some before, then nice links to jump into the various sections. <coughs> 
includes things such as accessibility, um, which we usually don't see a lot. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have a lot of links up at the top, so 